Hello gang, I'm in the middle of restoring two Yamaha B3 VFET amplifiers. I'm actually uh, testing the VFETs of these amplifiers before I put them back onto their heat sinks. I do this usually for most of my amps. Um, and I was actually testing these VFETs and it came across my mind that maybe I should share this in a video and maybe someone will find this information useful. So I'm almost at my last transistor. And the test that I'm doing today is, again, it's for a known working design, so for the operating conditions of a Yamaha B3. I'm choosing the IV curve for the amplifier being at idle. And I'm using uh, a dual power supply method. This is the method that I find most effective for uh, testing uh, VFS that I know should be original from Yamaha, matched by Yamaha. Just want to make sure that they haven't been swapped or they haven't been uh, gone bad or anything like that, right? If I was to test the uh, VFETs, uh, you know, that are unknown or for a different design, probably a curve tracer would be uh, more useful so we could see uh, different uh, IV curves. But this, I'm just going to take one point, one single point, which is the operating conditions of Yamaha B3, and um, uh, make sure that this transistor's are matched and there's then also I'm looking at uh, make sure that they have not developed gate leakage we'll go to that I'll get to that in a moment so the operating conditions of a Yamaha V3 are 51 volts drain to source of 51 VDS volts VDS uh, the uh, idle current of a Yamaha V3 is 180 milliamps and the question is at what volts between gate and source so what VGS is the transistor going to conduct 180 milliamps this is the concept of transconductance so as the vgs changes the current across the transistor changes so you want to match the vgs at 180 milliamps ideas okay so um the yamaha b3 vfets are matched within few hundred millivolts all the way to a volt and a half the matching of yamaha b3 vfets it's a little looser than that of a b2 uh, B2, uh, B2s are much, had a much tighter match. Uh, well, not much tighter, within, within less than a volt, but I've seen uh, Yamaha B3 VFETs that go above a volt, and uh, they are fully original. Anyways, uh, okay, first channel I tested, this is like maybe like, uh, what, uh, point, uh, 400 millivol millivolts over there, 530 millivolts over here, 560 millivolts over here, and we don't know this 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 uh uh n channel vfet what's going to be so we're going to see what this is so anyways uh what i have here is the contraption that you see it's a test fixture that i made uh that ensures some cooling it's uh, applied to the transistor this is for this test this is not really necessary because uh, i'm only testing at a, um, a minor uh you know the transistor is only going to dissipate less than you know i don't know 10 watts something eight nine watts uh something like that uh so it's not going to um put out a lot of heat uh but for other power transistors uh you know this this fixture helps and i'm using like as i mentioned a dual power supply uh method so i have uh, 51 volts across the uh, uh the, the drain to source it's actually i'm using two channels so it's 25.5 plus 25.5 i have it currently limited at 200 milliamps again uh, i'm only interested in uh, in getting 180 milliamps out of this transistor so i limited about 200 but yes this transistor could take a lot more so for different tests that limit would have to be adjusted and out of the supply number four here i'm using this for my gate voltage my gate voltage is limited at five milliamps just in case but i don't you know it shouldn't be anywhere near that as a matter of fact uh, as part of this test i am using I'm, I'm trying to see if there is any gate leakage of these transistors and because my rodian schwartz only reads into milliamps I employ the help of this uh, Keysight uh, multimeter that allows me to read into microamps. And so I have my volt, uh, my uh, VGS uh, source routed via this amp meter. And we should not see more than 10 microamps across the uh, leakage from, for, for gate to, from gate to source. So um, Again, one zero point something. So we shouldn't see anywhere near that. Uh, I think, uh, and I know we will see a lot less, probably a tenth or so of it, um, or maybe even less than that, hundred of it. So okay, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So we have a um, we've done the P channel 
13.87 VGS to get 180 milliamps across the transistor. Let's see where its pair is, the end channel. I have uh, swap, sweep, uh, uh, switched my wires around, and so I'm turning my power on, and this went immediately to zero. The transistor is completely turned off right now, which means there's sufficient gate voltage to turn this transistor off completely. And now what we need to do is adjust the voltage on the gate, lower it until we're getting some reading. There we go, or more. And then we're gonna go to a finer adjustment until we reach 180. Um, very interesting uh, fact is that the uh, Yamaha uh, VFETs and the uh, Sony VFETs, and I told all VFETs in general, but no, we'll you know, talk about it in a minute. But the Yamaha VFETs, Sony VFETs have a, what is called a negative temperature coefficient. So as the temperature of the transistor rises, the current it conducts it lowers, which is a very good thing, which means that it's really difficult to get this transistor into thermal runaway. That's not the same thing for token transistor, which was a surprise for me. I thought they would be the same or very similar. Token transistors have a positive temperature coefficient. So as the transistor heats up, the current it conducts also goes up, in turn heating up the transistor more and so on and so forth. So there is a danger of thermal runaway there with token transistors. Um, this is something that I, I, I don't know that that's the case. Just through this test, I figured that out. So as you see, as I waited a little bit, the transistor hit up a little bit and the uh, we're, we're about, it was 183 or 184 milliamps. Now it's about 180 almost so we could I mean, we could be really picky here and then go all the way here and get it back to 180 so uh what we can say is that this transistor at 13.57 volts uh, uh vgs conducts 180 milliamps so we're going to take this 13.57 and write it down one second So these are very, very close masses, 300. So it's 300 millivolts match for the, for this two transistor, this, this P channel and this N channel for the left channel of this amplifier. And a leakage of this uh, transistor is also nowhere near 10 microamps. So nowhere near one zero point zero zero microamps. It's a lot lower than that. So this is a very, very healthy transistor. All right, so there you have it, gang. I hope this information was useful and not boring. Uh, at some point in time, in the future, I intend to do a full uh, video on just testing VFETs, different types of VFETs, using curve tracers and, and this technique as well. Um, all right, so until uh, next time, bye-bye.